Welcome to the program. I'm Mark Imperial. This segment's being brought to you by BooksGrowBusiness.com. It's the place where busy professionals get their books done and published to educate consumers, grow their businesses, and to leave a legacy. I'm doing a series of spotlights on remarkable business intermediaries from across the country. And joining me on this segment is Regina Fisher with the Bristol Group. Regina, welcome to the program. Hey, Mark. Thanks for having me. Regina, tell us a little bit about your work and also tell us specifically who are the types of clients that you specialize in working with? Okay, so I am a business broker. My clients are always the sellers. I represent the seller. I help my clients to get the most money for their business, just so to speak. Um, I do not specialize in any specific industry. Um, I call myself industry agnostic. Uh, there's two reasons to that. Number one, I really enjoy the diversity in my work. So just to deal with plumbers would be kind of boring after some time. Um, and on the other hand, we are experts on the process. So I get a lot of questions uh, like, uh, have you ever sold a business like mine? And I always say either yes or no or something similar. But the point is, it doesn't really matter, right? It's a, it's a box of cookies, no matter what the cookies are inside, with chocolate or with peanut. Um, obviously, there's certain um, the framework, or certain parts to the business that make it um, differently as we approach the sale, but the industry itself has very little impact for me. I can relate to that because that's why I do radio. I like to learn about different businesses in all kinds of industries. Regina, let's talk about these business owners. Uh, they're they're really focused on growth, growth, growth. But are they? Are, how experienced are they in selling? Um, do they know where to start? No, uh, I mean some of them do, but I get a lot of calls saying, "Well, I'm thinking about selling my business. I don't even know." way to start, right? And that's usually the best time to call somebody like me. Uh, we can educate you on the process, what to expect. And then obviously the big question is always, how much is my business worth? And there's a lot of factors that fall into that. Yeah, let's unpack that a little bit. Uh, where do they start? Does it start with that valuation? Um, where do they begin? That's my recommendation always. You want to know what your business is worth right now. Um, my valuations, when I do, I always tell my clients, it is always with the viewpoint of what can we get on the market when we present it to third parties, right? That is my viewpoint. It's not for tax, not for banking, not for handing it over to the family. That might be different terms, right? But if you put it out on the open market, that's where we have expertise and know how, how much can we get for the business right now. And the aspects and the, the factors that fall into place is number one, it's always how much money are you making with the business? Bottom line. Top line is nice. But if you make $5 million in sales and you walk away with a dollar because you have a lot of expenses, your business is not going to be worth much. If you have $5 million in sale and you walk away with $1.5 million, it's a different story. So the bottom number is the key number. That's what a buyer wants to see. That's just the reason why they buy a business because they want to be rest assured they can be at least as successful as you and walk away with that money themselves every year, right? So that's the bottom number. And then there's a lot of other factors like what's the owner's role, right? What is there, is there any kind of licensing requirements, any kind of certain skill set, right? That all impacts our buyer pool. Um, if it's just the managerial, um, almost absentee owner position that the current owner has, a lot of buyers, a lot of interest. Do you have to have a plumber license? Well, it's a very small buyer pool. And the question is always location as well. I always uh, say like for a buyer to buy a business, it has to be the right industry in the right location, the right size and the right pricing and the right framework and at the right time, right? Because that buyer from Ohio might want to move down to Charlotte in October, but not now. Huh? The inspiration for this series is just the la lack of information of where to start. And maybe there's a lot of misinformation out there. Do you find that people you talk to have some sort of myths or misconceptions in their mind when it comes to selling a business? Well, of course, there's a lot of people that spit out um, what do you call like urban legends and, and, and truism and so forth. There's the multiplier, right? Again, coming down with this bottom number, that's your what you call owner's discretionary earning or EBITDA. And then there's a multiplier on that to get to your sale price. That multiplier is not rocket science. It's not a fixed number per industry, a fixed number for anything, right? It is in a range of, and I like to say it's a range from 0 0.1 to 19. 
but most of them are in the two to three range or five range. But where does that come from? Um, and a lot of people come like, oh, I was told uh, it's sales times two. Well, no, it's not, right? Number one, nothing goes by sales because like I explained earlier, the expense structure really impacts your bottom line. Uh, and very rarely um, is it a such a high number because again, you need to think as a seller always, would you buy this? And how much would you pay for this? And the money that you're making as an owner right now, it goes into your pocket. You can pay yourself a salary, you can pay your car, you can get yourself a boat, whatever you do with that money, right? You pay off interest rates, right? But a buyer, when they buy your business, let's say they buy a business for a million dollars, they will get an SBA loan most of the cases, or they take out their 401k and they want to replenish that, or they have to pay back that loan. So the money they're making out of the business first has to go towards that debt service and only the rest is left to pay their lifestyle. So how is this all going to work out? There are a lot of details when it comes to selling a business. So do some owners feel like they can sell it themselves, like selling a, uh, their, their home? Uh, what are the benefits of working with a, a business broker? Um, how can you help them? Um, well, number one, we can keep it confidential. I can reach out to a competitor and say, look, I have this uh, electrician business for sale. Are you interested in expanding your footprint? And they can have my name and my email address and my phone number. And they will never know who's behind me. Uh, I can reach out to competitors. I can put it up on the internet. Nobody will know who it is. And that's one of the biggest aspects of my work is to keep the fact that the business is for sale confidential all the way until the last day when we finally tell the employees, look, we have a buyer here. Right? Um, the second thing is I reach out to a lot of buyers. I find a lot, I have access to databases where buyers have registered. We have our own database as the Bristol Group. Uh, we have access to pools where buyers put in their search criteria. And of course we do what I also call passive marketing. So we put it on the, the typical sites like a bis buy sell where people that are looking are gonna find it. Now on average, I talk to 40 to 50 buyers before I sell a business. Right? Sometimes it's a hundred, sometimes it's 200 and sometimes it's five, but on average, you got to think 40 to 50. And the most important thing is when somebody signals interest based on that teaser that they saw or got from me somehow, then it's the follow-up, right? Staying in touch with them, answering their questions, coming back to them. And they want to have this person in between where they feel like I am not necessarily trying to sell them, right? It's like, I have this, you can have all the information you want from me. Um, in real estate, we're so used to this double agent and, and do dual agency and the seller agent and a buyer agent. In businesses, we don't have that because there's no hiding anything, right? We open up books, we open up all the drawers. You can see everything that we have for sale there and the buyers enjoyed it having somebody in between. Plus, uh, when we get to the point, a lot of times we have several offers on the table. It's a whole different negotiation situation if there's a broker in between. Um, I'm not you doing this as a, as a business owner because as a business owner to keep coming back and saying, let me find it out. You know, like this um, decider absent negotiation technique, you have that advantage for the broker. I read a, a statistic that over half, maybe up to 70 or 80% of businesses that go on the market, they're ill-prepared and they go unsold. What causes that breakdown? Are these folks like selling on their own and, and not being so prepared? What causes breakdowns and make a business not sell? There's two aspects to that, right? Let me answer the, the second part of your question first. So the ill-prepared to go onto the market is you got to know how to present a business, right? So what we do is we put together a teaser and then a confidential business review document or a confidential information memorandum where we describe the business very clearly. And we know the questions that a buyer is asking. We know what they're looking for, what kind of information they need. And if you don't have that, if you just think I'm just going to send in my profit and loss statements from three years, that's not going to sell it. You got to explain to them, look, this is what we're doing. And they want to be able to read up on that. Most of the people don't read everything. Then they're going to come back with questions. You're going to answer the same questions again. So you have to present your business in the correct light. Right? Prior to that, there are businesses that are not sellable. And why is that? Because again, coming back to the question, would you buy this business? Um, I had a conversation yesterday with somebody. Oh, we did 1.5 million in 2019. Then we did 500 in 2020. Now we're back to 700 in 2021. And I think this year we're going to be back to 750. Would you buy this? Obviously, that's, there's, there's a decline in, in revenue. And where's this coming from? This particular business was in an industry like printing, print media, advertising. Is this coming back? Is this going to go out of style? 
there might be no interest or somebody might want to gobble it up, but then they're not going to pay a lot of money. Right. So the question is always, is it even interesting, attractive for somebody to step into your footprints and carry this on? And then the second question always, how much do they want to pay for that? Great insight. R Regina, what inspired you to become a business broker and get involved in this industry? How did you get started? Oh, um, that's uh, I used to work internationally in the fintech industry. Somehow I morphed into a global expert in virtual credit card issuing projects. Sounds very interesting. I was negotiating strategic partnerships between banks and technology companies. Fell in love with Wilmington, North Carolina. Uh, realized at some point, luckily long before COVID, I don't want to travel anymore all the time. Uh, decided to stay here, enjoy the lifestyle we have here and had to find a way of applying my business skills to something I can do more locally. Uh, and I came across the Bristol Group. They've been an established business brokerage firm for, for 17 years. Uh, and we kind of vetted each other and they said, look, you, you're there, you just needed to, to, to learn two things. And one of which was understanding better the value of a small business because prior I was working with very large businesses. And the other thing is how you market yourself. That was the big, <laughs> it was a big thing. But I really, really enjoy my work. Business owners are awesome people. They've made it. They've gone through crisis, the ups and downs. A lot of them started the business from scratch. They've gotten to a point. A lot of my clients are going into retirement. That's why they're looking to sell. Some of them are uh, just changing their life, moving to a different region, but the majority are retirees. Uh, and now they just want to get rewarded for all, all the sweat equity they put into this business. And it's a very satisfying process to lead them through the way. Our relationship between a broker and a seller is extremely intense during a very emotional and financially important uh, time frame for my clients. Regina, for business owners listening that resonate with your message and would love to speak with you and get your help, how can they find you, connect with you and learn more? Okay, the easiest way you Google Regina Fisher business broker, you should find me. I'm based in Wilmington, North Carolina. And our website is bristolgrouponline.com. This has been terrific. Regina, I really appreciate you taking the time to share with my audience today. And I wish you continued success for you and for all of your clients. Thank you. Great pleasure to talk to you. Good luck with your show. That was Regina Fisher with the Bristol Group. And this segment's been brought to you by booksgrowbusiness.com. It's the place where busy professionals get their books done and published to educate consumers, grow their practices and businesses, and to leave a legacy. That's all for now. I'm Mark Imperial, and thanks for joining me.